Salama, that's an equivalent of hello in Malagasy. Don't mind the diadem Safaka next to me. He won't hurt you. My name is Nathan, and I am going to be your guide while you're on your trip to Ankara Fansica National Park, located in the amazing Madagascar. It's finally time to leave. Your bags are packed, and you've said goodbye to your loved ones. You've finally received your passport in the mail. So what's taking you so long? Let's go! Prepare yourself for a long flight, because it will be about a full day of travel. First, we will leave from Detroit Metropolitan Airport and head to Antana Nariva, or Tana as the locals call it. We finally arrived and I bet you're tired, but no sleeping yet. It's time for a little history lesson. Ankara Fansica became a national park in 2002. This dry deciduous forest is mostly home to the Sakalava, which are mainly zebu holders and farmers. It is home to eight lemur species, 129 species of birds, 75 of which are endemic, 10 frogs, 45 reptiles, including the extremely rare Madagascar big-headed turtle. More common is the cockerel safaka that likes to hang around the park, and even some of the bungalows. The lesson is over, so let's go for a short, very bumpy car ride to the large lavaca, which is a phenomenal consequence of erosion. On our walk back from the canyon, on our way to lunch, we may see a scops owl, but probably not, so please don't get your hopes up. This fish is for lunch. Yes, it is a whole fish, plated in a beautiful nest of rice. Enjoy because it surely isn't something you can see in the States very often. After lunch, we will take a short walk that turns into a night hike, so please remember your headlamps. We're going to see the baobab tree. This one is the tallest and endemic here to Madagascar. Also on this way back, we, ran, we also ran into the common jerry. This little bird who is quietly sleeping on a low branch is very small, but very easy to see from the road. After such a long day, it's finally time for bed. Choose wisely because you will need the best rest possible for our discussion through Durrell tomorrow. Sleep well and remember breakfast is at 6.30 a.m. Be there or we're leaving without you. Madagascar, as we know, is a biodiversity hotspot, which is exactly why Durrell is here. This sign is common for Durrell Wildlife Trust. Durrell Wildlife Trust is an NGO whose purpose is to save species from extinction all over the world. Currently, Durrell is trying to protect 11 species from being extinct. Durrell is located in Ankara Fansica National Park because of the plowshare tortoise. The plowshare is endangered tortoise and is now a part of XC2 conservation. XC2 conservation, by definition, is literally off-site conservation. It is the process of protecting endangered species outside of their natural habitat. They often do this because of habitat loss and poaching. As compared to in situ conservation, which is protecting an endangered plant or animal in its natural habitat because the habitat still exists. The plowshare tortoise has a highly domed carapace, which is the shell part, up to 45 centimeters long. Adult plowshare tortoises generally have a uniform, light brown carapace with pale limbs, neck, and head. The plowshare tortoise is named as such because, as you could assume, because of the large upturned projection extending from the front of the plastron, which is an enlarged gular scoop often used in combat between males for sexual dominance. This enlarged gular scoop is the plow. Currently, it is estimated there are only 100 to 400 individuals in the wild, which makes this tortoise the rarest in the world. This sadly inspires people with the thought that they need to have one. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species classifies the plowshare tortoise as endangered, but it probably warrants being labeled as critically endangered because not that many still exist in the wild. Durrell started a captive breeding site in Ampadru in 1986. They started with only five tortoises, three of which were males and two of which were females. That comes a long way since they can't breed until at least the age of 20 and they have raised 300. That's still pretty good since it takes almost 300 days to hatch eggs. Thankfully, in 2005, they started releasing tortoises. The first hatch was 20 strong. Now I'm going to lend you over to two of my friends, Meredith and Jonah. Jonah teaches at the University of Antananarivo and is a wonderful, intelligible man about plowshare tortoises. And Meredith is your professor. So pay close attention to these few videos because they're sure going to teach you quite a bit. December. No, December is less than a year. Last oh, December. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, six months. That's all big now. 
Yeah. So you guys, you want to take a photo of the baby? Yeah. So, the baby is there. Oh, the baby? Yeah. Says in the Tamatai. And since then, till today, we have raised more than 300 young. So the purpose of this captive breeding program is to breed with, I mean, one population, because this species is only found in a single site. So in 2005, we started to release the first 20 of the young, the juveniles, uh, raised here, born here. As you know, the sex of produce is like, uh, like crocodiles. It is determined by the temperature. If the temperature is very high, it's, the, 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 it's, it's, it's female. So what we do here is like uh, you arose with, I mean, with water. Because sometimes the act is like for 300 days. So it is a long, 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 as tortoise is a slow growing animal. And they start to breed at the age of 20. That's pretty late. It's pretty late. They start to breed at the age of 20. So sometimes it's even hard to know the sex at the age of 20 because the big male has this uh, uh, plow under the uh, yeah, yeah, plow. And the making behavior is like that. The males are fighting. And whoever wins, mates with the females. How many times a day do you check on them? Sorry? Do you put the flag one time a day? Uh, yes. Yeah? Because uh, in the winter, we don't move. The animals, we have to put them uh, on the other side to separate from the healthy. If some, uh, some individuals are sick. So those are the baby born from different years. Remember, one baby, one egg per female per year. And the risk of uh, uh, they are still high, so it's really, really. If you take a look at these tortoises, you can see the relative size of an adult. That's pretty insane saying the babies could fit easily into your palm. Once again, pay close attention to their locomotion, because this is one reason why it's so easy for poachers to obtain them. To some, these may look like normal fences, but not to us. These fences are quite large, and if you pay close attention to the very top, you may notice the direction of the barbed wire. It is facing outward into the world, not inward towards the tortoises as some may expect. This type of fencing suggests that it is not only to keep the tortoises in, but also to keep everyone else out. This sign of no entry also plainly states, no one is to enter the premises unless it is stated to be okay. Even on our trip into the park, it was quite an adventure because we only had special authorization. And walking in, we had to Clorox bleach our feet in order to sterilize them so we didn't harm the environment.